Let's talk about the best entry-level IT certifications for the year of 2023. Entry-level is so different than associate-level certifications. This is also called as the loser level. And don't hate me, I will explain this later. This is for beginners or who wants to start their career in IT. I still hate those best certification videos mixing entry level, associate, and even mid slash professional level certifications. Like they put AWS Cloud Practitioner and AWS Certified Solutions Architect Professional on the same list. And that is so stupid. These certifications should be in a different tier or different levels. For those who are new to this channel, welcome. What is my qualification doing this video again? I have over 60 IT certifications and it keeps growing. I started my career as a programmer, then became a web Linux administrator, then a network engineer, then a security specialist, then a solutions architect, became a global instructor who traveled the world, been a hiring manager multiple times, and helped thousands of people build their IT career and help them move from their poor countries to the United States, UK, Canada, Australia, and Singapore. I am career and certification captain. And on this channel, we talk about tech careers and certifications, trivia and tutorials in cybersecurity, trivia and tutorials in cloud and data center, and my journey as an IT instructor. So feel free to check out the rest of the channel and consider subscribing. Cisco just released two new entry-level certifications. These certifications are more basic and below CCNA level. This is called Cisco Certified Support Technician or CCST. And we have two paths. The first one is CCST in cybersecurity. This covers security principles, network security, and endpoint security concepts. It also covers vulnerability assessment, risk management, and incident handling. This certification is the first step towards Cisco Certified Cyber Ops Associate. Second one is CCST networking. This demonstrates the foundational knowledge and skills needed to show how network operates, including the device and protocol that enable network communications. And obviously, this is the first step towards CCNA certifications. Now, each, each exam cost only 125 US dollars. Now, this entry level certifications from Cisco is actually not pretty new. Before we have CCNA and the CCNA consists of two exams. We have ICND1. Now the ICND1, if you pass it, you will attain Cisco Certified Entry Network Technician or CCENT. And then after that, you pass ICND2 and obviously you will attain the CCNA certifications. And of course, you have the option to take CCNA directly. And the CCNA exam covers ICND1 and ICND2. Next, Microsoft Certified Azure Fundamentals. To gain this cert, you have to take and pass exam AZ-900 Microsoft Azure Fundamentals. The exam is intended for candidates who are just beginning to work with cloud-based solutions and services or those who are new to Microsoft Azure. It covers cloud concepts, Azure services, Azure workloads, security, and privacy in Azure cloud environment. It also covers Azure pricing and support. Candidates should be familiar with the basic technology concepts such as networking, storage, compute, application support, and application development. Next, Fortinet Awareness Level Certifications. These are NSE. NSE stands for Network Security Expert, Level 1, 2, and 3 Associate. Well, they call it Associate, but not really. They're just entry-level certifications. What are their differences? Well, first, NSE 1. 
you will learn about threat landscape and security problems facing by many different organizations. NSC2. This is the evolution of cybersecurity. You will learn about the types of security products that security vendors built to address many different cybersecurity related issues. Next, NSC Level 3. This is a Fortinet product course. This introduces you to key Fortinet products and describe the cybersecurity problems they solve. All three trainings and exams are for free and all online. Well, if you're going for entry-level certifications, better do it for free, right? Next, AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner. And for you to attain this certification, you have to pass CLF-C01 exam. I would have put this certification a little higher on the list, but here is the thing. Paper is cool. yes, probably the best certification, popularity and value-wise. But there are many technical terminologies in the exam that is not for entry level. Plus, the exam and training doesn't really cover the fundamentals, like the basics of servers, storage, network, security, application delivery controller, and many more. It's all about AWS services, AWS specific cloud design architecture, AWS best practices, and how you manage your AWS account. Price is good. It's only cost 100 US dollars. And most of the time, AWS gives a voucher from 50% to 100% discount. Plus, if you pass this exam, you will get a 50% discount voucher for your next AWS exam. It can be associate, professional, and even specialty level. I don't normally take entry-level certifications, but I have to do this. I have to take AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner. It's because of the AWS partnership. Yes, it's a requirement. Next. Not a 100% entry-level certification, but an entry-level exam. This is F5 Application Delivery Fundamentals. This is the only exam on the list that gives you half-step on getting an associate-level certification. That is F5CA or F5 Certified Big IP Administrator. This exam covers the basics of networking, security, and also introduce many different types of applications. It also introduced the basic concepts of F5 Big IP, which is an appliance, an application delivery controller that does many things, including local load balancing, global slash DNS load balancing, web application firewall, caching, web optimization features, and many more. If you pass this exam, I'm telling you, it would be really easy for you to prepare and take cloud-related certifications. And I am specific to the number two on this list, AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner. This exam costs 180 US dollars. Now, after passing the exam, you are now eligible to take F5201 TMOS Administration exam. And when you pass, you will attain F5CA. This is the reason why I call these the loser level. Again, before there was CCENT or Cisco Certified Entry Network Technician. You attain the certification when you pass the first half of CCNA, which is ICND1. CCNT is retired because it wasn't well known. Hiring managers and IT recruiters knows only CCNA, so it's better to go for CCNA directly. Same with F5101. It has only a little value, so better to continue and take F5201 to get F5CA or F5 Certified Big IP Administrator. It's a little different for AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner because for you to understand those services, you really have to know many different technologies. Do you agree entry level is considered loser level certs? Anything that is free and cheap is for losers! <laughs>